So welcome back to the third episode of Smooch and Spill. Today I have Irish fashion influencer Chloe Orman today. So for anyone who doesn't know you already, you're obviously an amazing content creator. You do a lot of fashion and beauty. Um, but we also know your dad, Brian Orman, who's a presenter. So it's kind of been like in your family, hasn't it? Like online and just being a little bundle of energy. So we'd love to learn a little bit more about you. And what age were you when you kind of got into this industry? I think I kind of just fell into it. Like definitely, I remember for my 16th birthday or 17th birthday, and um, me and my family were over in the south of France and I was like so close to getting 10k followers and I was like ecstatic and I was like oh my god so like my dad and Pippa was kind of like pushing me and stuff it definitely was my 16th birthday then and I got 10k and then that was just like the start of it then. it's only kind of after school then I kind of did fall into it I was like oh my god I could actually make a career out of this now but my family always say just stay true to yourself and you know what you like share and then you know that's just what people are interested in so that's what I do <laughs> yes absolutely and I forgot to say as well oh my god Brian and Pippa having a baby I know it's so exciting I can't wait I've literally known and then I saw the picture and we were all so excited it feels so real now because it's out in the open and everyone knows so we're all so excited and the boys are just like oh my god are you serious there's a baby in your tummy <laughs> Oh, I know. That'll be amazing. You know, the way you said that you have a weird fashion sense. I think you have an unreal fashion sense. Very cool. My friends would literally be like to me, oh my God, I would not wear that. But you'd rock it. Like you'd look unreal in that. And it's like, they don't, like, it's not like they don't have the confidence, but they just wouldn't have like the balls to just put it on and wear and not care what people think. Whereas I just like wear what I want. Yeah. And that's a massive thing, isn't it? I suppose with what we do is just not caring what other people think you definitely though learn though don't you like those people are going to have something to say whether it's good or bad yeah and I suppose have Brian or Pip ever given you like advice in that sense like in the regards of like block out the haters yeah we just like ignore it to be honest with you because um what's the point getting worked up about it and you know giving them your senses because that's what they want you know yeah I actually remember um because obviously like they've been in the game so long like in this industry and I actually remember Pippa was doing a Q&A one night and someone wrote in something I can't remember a question and she was like something about what was the weirdest rumor you've ever heard about yourself before or something she was like honestly nothing surprises me anymore because people just have like no limit or no filter and I'm just like that is the kind of attitude you need just like I don't even care because I find that like sometimes you nearly hear a rumor about yourself and you're like what that I, I did that <laughs> Yeah, you learn something new every day. You're like, I did that. Like, what? <laughs> to laugh, you know. You do. You have to laugh it off. But obviously, yes, we discussed that you're so into fashion and that you have such a really cool fashion sense. But how did that actually come about? Did you do like a fashion course or anything or just come naturally to you? Um. Well, my mom is actually a personal shopper in Arnott. So she's actually really um fashionable herself. So like she'd helped me an awful lot. Like, I remember when I was younger, I used to say to my mom, mom, like, I don't know how to dress myself. Like, I don't know what's nice in my wardrobe to put together. And like, she'd always help me. And then when I was eight, she'd like start to stop and make me do it. And then I just kind of learned like what goes together. I never knew that. That's brilliant. I'll have to book in for an appointment with her myself. <laughs> yeah, so she's doing that. So definitely like on both sides, then I, I kind of get a little bit from everyone. Yeah. And are you, you're still in Ireland, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm actually after leaving for the summer now, but um, I work in Arnott's too, I with my mum. So I'm literally working there since I'm like 17. What does the summer entail for you? So I'm actually getting ready now for my move to Ibiza. So I don't know when I'm going to be coming home. I didn't book like a return flight. I just said, you know, we're all after being in lockdown now for so long. And I was just like, I can't do another summer here. So I just want to live my life now. So I said, you know what? I'll just move to Ibiza. So yeah, that's the plan for now. <laughs> just living life. It was where do you see yourself in like five years time in terms of working? I am literally, do you know, I go through stages where it's like, what do I want to do? Like, I still don't know what I actually want to do. I'm just- You're still in college like, though, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm doing a radio course at the moment. So we'll see where, like what happens with that and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm kind of at that stage in my life where now where I'm like, oh my God, I need to like start like thinking of what I want to do with my life and making like a, a plan. 
but yeah so the first thing was just like okay move away for the summer or for how long and see what happens then hopefully I meet somebody and I could settle down in five years because I'm single Pringle um but yeah you are too aren't you I am very much so <laughs> oh, so so single I was like when you told me you were going to Ibiza I was like can I actually come please let me come but I'm just like at the same time I actually don't know how I would last in Ibiza I feel like I'd probably like party non-stop the first week and then I'd be like oh get me home I can't do this anymore whereas like you said it'll just turn into normal life after a while and you'd be like I need to get up I need to like do the groceries and my trolley will be full of like food not just drink yeah exactly but you should definitely come over in August or something that would be so funny imagine us two together I think that that would be an iconic duo actually maybe I will come over in like August is it August you're staying until or September I'll probably I'm gonna stay like my I have everything paid for till after August so like literally when I want to come home I'll decide to come home I'm 21 in September so I'm kind of thinking I'll come around like home around then because like the baby will be due then not so long after so I was like, I'll definitely want to be home for like October, the latest. We should get into the secrets anyway, because um, we have so many to get through. And also before we actually get into the new ones, we have to discuss the ones that we had the last time. So obviously we were chatting about a little bit of everything, but there was two in particular that stuck out to me because I knew that you'd be the right girl to ask about um, meeting celebrities and stuff. So tell us the two you told me already and those stories and then tell me the one that you remembered in the meantime. The first one, what was the first one again that you asked me? Uh, the Jack Fincham one. <laughs> slide into my DMs, yeah. So I remember I was literally going through my first heartbreak and you know what that feels like. It's absolutely horrible and you always have that knot in your chest and you feel so lonely. And I remember I woke up in the morning time and I think I put like a little gym pick up that I was going to the gym and I was trying to like, you know, work on myself. And Jack Fincham slid into it. I was like and he was like oh I'd love to see you in my gym Chloe something around the lines of that and it was a voice note and by god like I was just like oh my god I was just starstruck didn't even know what to say to him like how like, old were you at the time it was the only literally not that long ago it was probably like two years ago so I'm 20 now so 18 oh my god and how old is he he's like 30 isn't he we won't talk about his my dad hears this he'd be like what yeah okay we won't he's only a young fella no, he is. <laughs> he's not too much older than oh god she's not too much older than me it wasn't too bad yeah and um, what do you think you'd ever go on the island because at this stage i think we have no other choice chloe oh my god and i'm like literally the fussiest person ever i don't know i did get asked before and um, i just i don't know i'd have to see like how I am in the moment like I think it's a it's a big thing to think of because not only is it just you deciding to go on Love Island it's just like you have to think about the backlash you're gonna get and everything else and as well how they're gonna like portray you too with like the edits and stuff so I don't know it is a tricky one um yeah definitely I'm still but, um, single in like two years time I'd say oh for god's sake just hook me up with somebody <laughs> but you're definitely single by choice Chloe like I'm sure there's boys knocking down your door I just think at the moment it's just so hard isn't it like you're just like you just don't know what you want I'm just gonna live my life now and just let the universe bring it to me if it's gonna happen it'll happen no doubt you'll find someone and I beat the anyway and all of a sudden he'll be all over your Instagram and I'll be like this is it hot girl summer it's cancelled <laughs> no definitely not I actually am laughing at you know like you those TikToks and it's not happening in fact right me and all my friends we were like right we're doing hot girl summer it's just I don't know why it, this hasn't been a thing before it's like this year is like the year for it and we were all like right we'll all do it and sure I'm sorry, like the only single person left me and two others everyone else is in a relationship I was like you didn't understand the assignment I literally only have like two friends that are single the rest are literally all in like proper serious relationships so I feel I feel you there yeah it's horrible is- yeah, this is why I'm literally going to have to book my ticket to Ibiza because otherwise I'm just going to be here crying in the club. I can literally picture me being drunk or something and voice note you being like, Shana, you have to come over here and look at this gala for you. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of being um, being single and lonely, I think that leads us to the next celebrity um, thing that you had to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> okay and um, this is actually the new one so 
I remember I was on holidays in Portugal. It was actually, I was actually only like 16 or 17. Why do I keep referring back to those years? That was like the, my prime, <laughs> but it was my birthday. And I remember I had like um, a little birthday badge on in Portugal. I went to like Alba Fair and I went to the strip you know what happens when you go there you know she doesn't have no ball and dancing and do you remember scotty t yes i kissed him <laughs> i forgot to tell you that the last time and my friends are just talking because i remember saying i couldn't think of anything i went blank and i was like how did i forget that chloe you kissed scotty t when you were 16 <laughs> oh stop yeah <laughs> Oh, I can't cope. Did you actually? <laughs> yeah, I swear I did. I don't know how I forgot it. it was literally that long ago. Were and you on a family I... holiday? Yeah, I was on a family holiday. Could you remember? <laughs> oh, Who my did mom... you go to the strip with? I need to know this. I went with like, cause I, so I went with my family. So my mom and like my nan and my granddad were there. And then like my mom's friend. So all the like us kids went literally out and we were like, okay, we're going to go dance. And they were all older than me. So I went with them and I was literally just going for a dance. And then he saw it was my birthday and he was like, well, you're going to have to get a birthday kiss. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Imagine if you were actually like filmed on Jour de Jour. Could you imagine that? I think he was actually filming a show that, was it was it like something like something about being on the beach x on the beach or something yes i think he was over there because that was alba fair and he was like filming because he was telling me that he was filming um so I I was it like a proper kiss or like a peck no it was like a birthday kiss shana like he was making my birthday <laughs> oh my god <laughs> joey i cannot cope okay and tell us the last one about jb himself <laughs> Justin Bieber was this the one when I was at the concert and I was so close to going up to being on stage and being his one less lonely girl or whatever yeah. I was literally at the concert with my mom and I was like I have to get up there later on like at least she wasn't watching the whole concert I was like too busy like saying to the security guard please get me up on stage like, please I'm obsessed with Justin Bieber and um, he was like, yeah, we will, we will, we will. So then he took my hand because he was like pretending, okay, I need to choose somebody in the audience, but they already had somebody choose, like chosen. So the security man was like, okay, come on, we bring you up. And I got to like the little stage door and they had already, the other security guard had brought someone over from the opposite side. So my like childhood dreams were ruined. <laughs> but then as well, another weird one, Justin Bieber was in Dublin and he was staying in the same like estate that my dad lives in and I was like oh my god so I remember I was like going up and I was like oh my god am I gonna see him am I gonna see him he was on the golf course and my dad was on the golf course with him and I literally didn't get to see him I was like oh Chloe I knew that you'd be the right person to say this to because we're after forgetting another one who did you get a missed call from you see that's <laughs> yeah not horn I was only a baby I'm like and my phone was I love the way you got hit up by all these celebrities when you were an actual infant <laughs> I know like I wish they come after me now <laughs> and but yeah my phone was calling during the night and you know I was asleep my phone was on silent I didn't hear it and then my dad was like why didn't you answer your phone last night like it was literally probably only 11 o'clock but I was in I was literally it goes to show I was a kid I was at home in bed ready for school the next morning and I woke up and there was a missed call from Niall Horn on my phone he left me a voice note a voicemail and I was like oh I was so upset I was literally devastated because that was when like One Direction like were so big and I was obsessed with him and Harry Styles still am oh I'm so jealous. Who? What was your favorite um, celebrity out of those four that you um, interacted with? What was the best experience? Probably Scotty T and your birthday kiss. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. And um, it was probably, do you know, what? I'm definitely going to say Jack because I was going through such a hard time and literally nobody online would have known that I was going through such a hard time. So that little message gave me like the confidence that I needed while going through a breakup. So yeah, Jack jack for the win <laughs> yeah what kind of advice would you give someone going through a break because obviously we are going to talk real summer but i feel like a lot of people are going through breakups now and you know what this is something that you might have even noticed yourself but so many people have said to me being like oh i started texting this guy during lockdown whatever and now like well he was weak for me all through like lockdown and now when like the world is opening up he's like literally ghosting me and like 
we had all these plans and it was like no I'm just going to the pub like want to hang out with the lads and like people are literally getting ghosted by like their lockdown lovers it's crazy. I always say if he wanted to, he would. And um, I definitely will never chase like a guy or never like, obviously you'd have that one boy that you kind of like were a film yep. for <laughs> ever again, like live and learn. And um, I always find that they want what they can't have. So the longer you like pretend you don't care, even if you do like literally just play it cool and don't throw yourself at them. 100% heavy cause boys literally like, don't appreciate like girls which is so strange isn't it yeah like literally it doesn't matter how good you are how like you know much you love them they're literally they just love what they can't have they love the chase and um, mm. I always say keep them mean keep them keen yes and you know my friend said to me the other day and I'm actually never going to get over it like a girl goes for someone that they really like like you could be like 16 and like fall mad in love with this guy and you'd be happy to stick with him forever whereas like a boy will pick like timing and convenience over like the right person so like I think a boy could meet the love of their life at 16 and they're like oh I would want to be single till I'm like 25 and get rid of them and then they'd like prefer to just pick someone they don't really like at like 30 instead of like being settled down for that amount of time and I was like that is so true it is so true and as well like they can block out their feelings so much like easier than us girls can and um, I always find like at the start I'd always be devastated and then I find that I kind of get stronger and I'm fine and it's like bye bye forget about it but then a few months later they always come running back and they like they'll never forget you like if you're the good one you're not they're gonna like not find anyone yes better. 100% they will literally come running back so you just need to just live your life and just stay strong oh but literally I actually completely agree with that like it's it's nearly like when you the second you get over someone it's like when they want you back isn't it yeah definitely it's always the case and your mom always knows I your mom always knows I don't care even at the moment you think oh stop like you never like anybody but they literally always know your family are always right 100% so we need to get into the secrets I just thought this one was so funny okay so met a guy on tinder things are going really strong and we did long distance for years I was on Facebook one day and spotted an article written in the newspaper about him turned out he was married and had two kids one who helped him deliver on the other side of the road like I'm sorry what as in like gave birth on the side of the road yeah like what that is very random like that's just mental like where would you write that like I was like sorry what I know sure we were only saying the last time or maybe it was someone else have you seen that thing on TikTok and it's like um girls or guys putting up videos being like I'll never forget you and it's like people on holidays and you're like oh my god (laughs) Literally, could you imagine seeing like your partner for like the last four years in a video like that? That would sound and send you out. <laughs> I know, <laughs> any, even if you weren't together at the time, even seeing them with like that with someone else would just drive me insane. That trend is so, so dangerous. Like that would literally ruin a relationship. And in that case, a marriage, if that girl went and said it to her, like it's just crazy. Yeah, it is. Like, understand what's wrong with guys like that do stuff like that like if you're not into somebody like just call it a day I know I know would you rather be the dumper or the dumpy um do you know what I'm actually I probably would rather somebody dump me because I feel like I wouldn't be with them if I didn't want if I didn't love them or I didn't really like them so I'd rather actually be somebody that like was the dumpy because you just Mm. live like on then you know the type of way yeah I'd be the same I actually have never broken up with someone I've only been dumped so <laughs> that explains yeah, that I've never broke up with anybody um yeah I don't think so no oh us heartbroken little huns <laughs> I know it's horrible it's not nice it, it actually is I I just couldn't like wish it on my worst enemy like a bad breakup is the end of the world like I know, but then as well, you have to remember it will never be as hard as it was the very first time. Don't say that to me. You're telling me there's more. (laughs) 
<laughs> you'll never be as upset as you were the fr- like the very first time that's just how I can put it like I remember the first time I was heartbroken I was like getting sick and I was went through such a horrible like time but the second time I was upset but I was that tad bit stronger Mm, yeah I know what you mean I just feel like it just literally changes you you learn so much from a breakup don't you yeah 100 unless you go back to him and then it's like it's (laughs) it's all over again yes (laughs) Okay, I seen a good one here, so I'm going to um share this one with you. I stole 50 euro from my friend on a night out when I was drunk. I would never ever do it normally, so I don't know what came over me. I'm absolutely mortified and I can't admit it to him. <laughs> I've no words. I know because like what would you even like say? Because you couldn't be like, imagine if they were like to you, oh, did you see my 50 euro anywhere? Like, what? And how would you even steal money off a guy? Like, don't they have, like, their money, like, tucked into their jocks or something? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Because then you'd be afraid then if something else went missing, then, like, they'd automatically always think it's you. Like, that's then the, like, vision they have of you then. That's a tough one. But I would probably be honest because that, like, my guilty conscience would just kill me then. Same. Yeah. That's why even a while ago when you were saying there about the person, like, cheating, I just couldn't physically do it. Like, I just couldn't do it. Like, even if I was in a relationship now... And like Zac Efron hit me up, I'd be like, I can't. Like, I just physically can't do it. Like, I don't think it matters who it is. It's just if you love somebody, your head shouldn't be turned. And if you do, your head won't be turned. Yes. And I always say you wouldn't like the second guy if you really liked the first guy. So exactly. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. I'll leave you take another one. Okay. Um, so went out to this fella for the first time and spotted one of my girls on the bus I laughed and my chewing gum fell out of my mouth by accident and got stuck in my hair it was stuck there for the whole day out and I had to hold like onto her hair like a weirdo for the whole day (laughs) oh god there's actually nothing worse than chewing gum as well like the only way to get it out is cut it like I'd be getting sick, like, oh, the thought of that, like, imagine all stringing in your hair and everything. I know. I have such, like, a gag, like, I'm, like, not good with stuff like that. Yeah, I don't like that either. And, you know, I saw this thing before, Uh, okay, here's another one. Okay, this one looks good. I was so drunk two summers ago, I took food off the tray when a waitress was bringing it to a table. It wasn't even my food. I got kicked out and was banned from the restaurant for life after. <laughs> oh, does anything like that ever happen to you? Like, just... No, not that much. I will admit one time um, me and my friend were in, oh, were we in sixth year or first year of college? And we were literally just like going around the pub like, drinking random people's drinks like off their table like we literally could have gotten spiked but we were just like picking them up and drinking them and walking away well could you imagine doing that now with covid and everything like <laughs> everything is gonna change yeah and like even like kissing strangers on a night out just isn't gonna be a thing anymore i know and then you're gonna be like oh my god like did they have covid are they vaccinated like it's just i know <laughs> So now I'm like, oh, like, do when you see somebody, do you give them a hug? Because I'm such a hugger, but it's just awkward. So awkward. Like, imagine an Ibiza, you'll be like, elbow, <laughs> ankle touch. I'll leave you go again. I work in a pharmacy and sold a pregnancy test to a girl I know. I was speaking to her boyfriend later that day and let it slip that she, was she pregnant oh no that is so bad I'd feel like I'd be like that too if I was like working in a pharmacy or like working in like I don't know a doctor's or something I'd be like what's she here for now that's dangerous isn't it like it's a bit like confidential like (laughs) yes I know one time oh I'll actually never forget this Chloe I had actually to check if my parents were here before I say this I went into um Boots it was my friend's birthday and we were going out for like a night out and we were just like giving her like a card like funny things in it and one of the things Uh we put in the card was condoms so I went into Boots and I was like half mortified like nearly 24 why was I so mortified went up anyway and what went to pay and everyone was like oh there's like a deal like if you buy another box whatever I don't know and I was like oh no no it's fine it's just this and then as I was paying she was like by the way I know who you are I'm such a big fan of your Instagram 
And like, you know, my Instagram stories, I'm like, oh my God, haven't been touched by a male in the longest time. So she was definitely like, she's a liar. She's a liar. And then I just panicked on the spot. I was just like, ha ha, hi, put them in my bag and ran off. Why didn't I say they're actually not for me? That is hilarious. You know, that goes through my head as well. Like, you know, if, if you're just even in the shop buying tampons, it's hilarious that I you know. just ran off. At least it wasn't something like worse. It was only <laughs> like condoms. Oh God, oh my God. It you're literally... sending a good example. I know, yeah, I was like, safe sex. But I literally <laughs> said to my friend afterwards, I was like, I'm never going to forgive you for this. And I just like picked up the first thing that was like in front of me. I wasn't standing there like evaluating them. And then when I took them out of my bag, they were like extra large, extra loose. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say everyone went into our group chat being like, um, Sean is having a good night tonight. <laughs> I hope she's listening to this right now. <laughs> oh, I hope she isn't because she's probably like, oh, why did I say hello? Because I'm always saying, oh, say hello, like if you see me, whatever. But like buying the condoms, I was like, no, no. But it wasn't even bad. Like it's just because I'm mortified about those things. And the fact <laughs> that they weren't for me. I feel like if I was like, I don't know, if I knew I was like getting lit tonight, I'd be like, woohoo. <laughs> but I was oh. just mortified. Um, is it your turn or my turn? Yeah, so I only have one more here. Um, okay, fab. The little but an old boss who treated me like dirt showed up to a workshop I was speaking at as a lecturer. Best day ever. Yes. Oh, I love that. I always think that as well. I actually don't think it's happened to me, but I feel like it's definitely happened to people like in general. Have you ever had someone who was like mean to you in school or not nice to you in school come up? Or like message you on Instagram being like, well, you're doing so well. Or like, where's your t- clothes from? Or like, how did you get into blogging? And you're like, remember in school when I was ugly and you hated me? Yeah, that happens to me all the time. Like I used to like get such a high time in school. Like I was in an all girls school. And Same. then you find like those girls that were like, gave you literally hell. Are like, pretend like you're so nice to you now. And you're like, what the hell you didn't like yeah. me then why do you want me now <laughs> yeah I have actually not had that experience with girls but I have with boys like I was in an all-girls school too but like boys who were like in the boys version of my school who like would have just been like ripping the piss out of me all through school like I wasn't like popular at all or like in the like good looking crew or anything like that so like they didn't even half know me but whenever they did know me they were always like just being dickheads to me like and then I remember like in like college and the end of college and like when I started on Instagram like seeing them on nights out and they'd be like oh Shauna Shauna like take a picture put us on your Instagram and I'm like yeah, that annoys me I hate all that yeah <laughs> and like sometimes you'd nearly think then because obviously I know like we don't see ourselves as any flipping thing special you know what I mean but then when you hear like people being like I don't know, like just wanting to like get a picture with you to like put on their story and stuff. It's like, what? That's weird. I know. And it's just really like, oh, your Instagram. It's like the first thing people always bring up. And I'm literally like, I don't even talk about it. It's just literally like I use it like I use Snapchat. Like I literally remember Snapchat. Like you'd literally yeah. put everything on your story. Like that's how I kind of use that. So sometimes I actually forget even about like, you know, the followers and what you do because it doesn't. Mm. Like, would be gone tomorrow and I always say that like don't let like your following or like Instagram define you because if that's 100%. gone tomorrow, it's gone yeah I know my snapchat got deleted the other day it lost everything like lost all my memories all my pictures they said that I broke a rule and my account got terminated I broke no rules so all of my like snapchat came out well snapchat memories came out the day before I went to Magloff so every single thing since then is in, in my memory so like Magluff, Debs, Grads all through college like and now they're all gone and I didn't have any of them saved to my camera roll so I was like great oh, you see I okay last one here and it's actually kind of a weird one <laughs> this girl ate dog food just to see what it tasted like my friend actually did that really yeah it's rank ew maybe it was your <laughs> friend who sent it in oh my god imagine if she's watching this I hope it's not you and yeah. um, her brother like dared her to do it and she did it oh, uh, you know what I saw before oh I'm actually even going to get I'm the same as you I get the gag reflex before I was at a party and some fella peed in a cup and drank it uh, uh, I know. that's disgusting I know <laughs> no, this is 
is actually a bit too much information, but I actually was bursting to go to the toilet one day <laughs> with the girls and I had to pee in the back of the car into a cup because I was like, I'm going to wet myself. And they were like, ew. And then I was like, that looks like orange juice and not apple juice. Because now every time I see apple juice, it just reminds me of pee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, at least you got to throw it out the window though. You didn't have to drink it. <laughs> That's thing, could you imagine? I'd literally end up in hospital. I'd be oh. so dumb. Even like when I'm feeding my dog, I have to like put a peg on my nose because I can't cope with the smell of it. It's rotten, isn't it? So and much. My, my new little puppy loves like fish food. So I'm like, it's disgusting. <laughs> the yeah. smell of it. Fish. I'm a vegetarian as well. So I'm literally like. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But I think, is that all your secrets? That's kind of all mine as well. I'm one of the babies. So oh, lovely. Fab. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chloe, for re-recording with us and everything. It was so great to have you back on. And we even had more fun this time, didn't we? Yeah, we literally have spoke even more. Like, you're after finding out so much more. It's so good. Thanks so much, guys, for listening in to our third episode. A massive thank you to everyone who sent in their secrets. And, of course, Chloe for re-recording. And we hope you stick around for the next episode.